Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. If you're looking for a really easy clothing project that you could make as a gift for someone or maybe just for yourself, try making pajamas. Now this one is made out of Christmas flannel fabric. It's the Snuggle brand that Joanne Fabrics and Crafts carry. They have a very large selection of the flannel fabric. But if you don't want to make it with Christmas, don't forget you can use other types of flannels and cottons. I'm using Simplicity Pattern number 1043 and the size in the pattern itself is listed up here at the top. So make sure you read the size and make sure you get the correct one for you. The pants is labeled E. So when you go to get all of your instructions and information, you look for pants that's labeled E. To get the information about the measurements for the sizes, it's on the very back of the envelope. And I've highlighted in yellow those areas that you need to look at. You look at the measurements and whatever measurements fits your body size you need to measure yourself or the individual you're making them for. Then that's the size you go with. The pants information is down at the bottom and remember it's labeled E. Once you get your pattern piece selected, then you wanna hold it up to you. Make sure it's gonna fit you. If not, you need to make adjustments. If you wanna make adjustments in the length, there is an area down near the bottom, about halfway down the leg, you will see double lines. If you need to make it shorter, you just fold it where you need it. If you need to make it longer, you cut through the middle of the lines and separate it till you have that length. Do not cut at the very bottom of the pants to shorten it because you've got flared edges out here that need to remain there. On the first page of your pattern sheet, you're gonna see an area that looks like this. And this is how they recommend you lay your fabric out depending on which pattern you're using. If you're making a top or the pants, it also goes by the width of your fabric. For me, because I'm making the pants, you flip the pattern sheet over and that information will be there. So this is the layout. I looked for the size and then this is how they recommend you lay it out. Your fabric is not folded, so you unfold your fabric completely and this is how they recommend you lay it out. Now, the reason why one piece is shaded that means it's front side. So make sure after you cut one pant leg out, you flip your pattern over, lay it down, and then cut it out. I wanna show you the different type of stitching you can do on your seams. If you have a mechanical machine, you probably have some overcast stitches, depending on how old the machine is. So you could do your straight stitch and the width, uh, seam width for these pants is 5 8 inch. So you could do your straight stitch and then do a zigzag stitch over the edge. If you have a machine with overcast stitches and if you have a computerized machine, you do have overcast stitches, just check your user's manual to see which ones they are if you are not sure. So you could do your seam and then do your overcast stitches to bind the edges. This seam was done on a serger and this is the method that I'm using. I recommend that at the very top where the waist is, here's the top of my piece, and then at the very bottom of the pant legs, do an overcast stitch or do your serger stitch. It's gonna be much easy to, easier to do it now than to do it later. So you look for the, to, the instructions that are for pants E. It tells you to take each piece 
and fold front sides together down the inseam of the leg. So here's one of my pieces. So you're going to fold it with pretty side together, line up this inseam edge, and then use pins to hold it together. And then use the appropriate stitch based on the machine that you're using. And here what is what my edge looks like after being surged. The method they're using to put these pants together is so easy. So your next step is to reach inside just one of the pant legs and turn it front side out. And again, you're only doing this on one. So now you have one pant leg that's turned front side out and one that has the back side out. So this is the pretty side. You're going to open up the other one here and insert it into the leg, matching your inner seams together. So once you get it inserted, you want to line up this horseshoe looking edge right here and pin it together. I'm going to recommend that the way you fold this center seam here, the, the seam that goes down the leg, so when you're pinning it in here, I have one seam going to my left and then on the inside here you see the other seam going to the right and that's going to keep it nice and flat. Then after you have it uh, pinned together, then go ahead and stitch along this edge. Now reach inside and pull the other leg out and you're going to then pull the front side out on the other piece. So now your pants should look like this. We're now going to work at the waist area and make the casing that the elastic will go in. So in the instructions it tells you to fold your top edge over and press it. Because my edge is surged, I'm not going to do that step, but for those of you who want to, you just fold this over and then fold it over again three quarters of an inch and pin it down. After pinning, you want to indicate an opening, an area that you're going to leave open so that after this step you can insert your elastic. So I've put one pin here, and this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to back stitch there. Stitch all the way around the waist area, and then I put two pins to tell me where I need to stop. And again, back stitch. So you'll have this opening here where you can insert the elastic, and it's about two inches wide. Because I've surged my edge, when I stitch, I'm going to stitch right down the middle of this surged edge. For those of you who folded it under, then you want to stitch along your inside folded edge. As I was reading the instructions and the area on the supplies needed, it didn't mention elastic. At least I didn't see it. Maybe it was there, but I couldn't find it. But based on the width of the finished casing side, which was around three quarters of an inch, I assumed you would use half inch wide elastic. So then take it and wrap it around your waist and add one inch to it and then cut it. Then at one end, you're going to put a safety pin on the end. So then take the pin and insert it into your casing at the opening and begin pushing it through gathering it up. After you've pulled it through to the other side of the opening, then make sure your elastic isn't twisted at this point and go ahead and pin the ends together. Then try it on. If the pants are too loose around the waist, then you can cut some of the elastic off, but there has been plenty allowed for any adjustments. Then overlap your ends uh, anywhere from a half inch to an inch, and then do a couple of rows of zigzag stitching, and that will allow it to stretch. Then after you stitch the ends together, 
push the elastic back inside the casing and stitch the opening closed. If you've surged the bottom of your pant legs to hem the pants, fold it up an inch and then stitch down the middle of your surged edge. If you want to turn your edge under a quarter of an inch, it's recommended in the instructions that you press that quarter inch wide edge, then fold your pants up and then pin it and stitch it down. After stitching, this is what mine looks like on the inside. I stitch down the center of the surged edge and then this is what it looks like on the outside. And this is what the pants look like when they're done. So when you're working on these pants, you don't have to make it out of flannel. It, on the uh, package, it'll also recommend other types of cotton fabric to use. So if you don't want to use the flannel, you don't have to. Remember, check out Joann's because they have a great selection of snuggle fabric. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something new. If you're interested in other beginners sewing projects, make sure you go down below your YouTube screen to the description section and click on show more or the down arrow and you will see all kinds of links uh, taking you to beginners sewing projects. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy sewing! If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl. This is Manny. See you next time.